what is going on everybody and to say I'm disappointed at what we're going to talk about here would be a very grave understatement so I was at work today and I came across the news that Psychonauts 2 has been successfully crowdfunded and that really upsets me now I know what you're probably thinking you're probably thinking Dan why are you upset that a game that people want to see, they want to see get made, is actually going to come out. Why would that upset you? Because we got all these other great crowdfunding projects like Ukulele, Mighty Number no. 9, and then there's that, um, I forgot what it's called, excuse me, but it was that Castlevania Symphony of the Night remake. I forgot what the name is called, so forgive me for that. But we got all these other great Kickstarter projects, well not Kickstarter projects, but crowdfunding projects. And it's cool that they are getting made. Because people want to see these games. So why would one of these, being successful, upset you? Well, I will tell you why it upsets me. It's because this is a game by Tim Schafer. Tim Schafer, who is a disgusting piece of garbage. Now, as soon as you hear me say that, you're probably going to, the alarms are going to go off in your head. Why would you say that about Tim Schafer? Tim Schafer is a respected developer. He's made so many great games over the years. Why the hell would you call him that? Well, you know what? You will find out in this video because I talked a little bit about Tim Schafer in my PlayStation Experience video months ago. But I never did a full-on rant on him. But now is the time for that. Now is the time, after seeing Psychonauts 2 get crowdfunded, it is time for this big rant. Tim Schafer made a lot of great games back in the day. Now, admittedly, I never played most of those games, but I have seen those games, and I can understand why a lot of people would enjoy them, because he made a lot of point-and-click adventure games, which is a genre that's really not around today. So it's kind of cool to see that these games are still being made. Like, he made the Secret of Monkey Island games, he made Grim Fandango, and Full Throttle, and a bunch of other games. He also made Brutal Legend, that was his last major console game, was Brutal Legend on the 360 and PS3. Which, by the way, I actually enjoyed Brutal Legend. I actually enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't a perfect game, but there's a lot there that I really enjoyed, and I hope to see a sequel. Unfortunately, a sequel never happened, because apparently, Tim Schafer... Ran out of money and couldn't make any more games. Because apparently Brutal Legend did not make enough money for profit. And of course, I guess no major publisher wanted to publish any of Tim Schafer's upcoming games. Of course, on the flip side of that, you have people inside the industry that have said that Tim Schafer is hard to work with. He has a tyrannical attitude. And he's not really good at time management. Which, by the way, I'm kind of inclined to believe after recent events which we will get into later in this video. So then it was around, I think it was either 2011 or 2012, Tim Schafer announced he was making a game. And it was going to be called Broken Age. And people were like, oh, this is cool, Tim Schafer's back, he's making another game. We haven't seen a Tim Schafer game in so long, this is awesome. And then of course, it never came out, because no publisher wanted to publish the game, and of course he supposedly didn't have the money. So what did Tim Schafer do? He set up a Kickstarter for Broken Age. And I believe he asked for, I think the goal was $400,000 for Broken Age. So he asked for $400,000 for this game to be made. Which, you know, I'll be honest, Broken Age is a point and click game. I don't really see why it would cost that much, to be perfectly honest. Now, I'm not sitting here saying I'm a game developer, but when you look at the game and its final product, it, did it should it really have costed that much money to make? I mean, unless the voice actors had a unreasonably high price tag, because he used some well-known voice actors. Like, I think, I think Jack Black was in Broken Age, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe that was it. I don't know. But he asked for $400,000. People gave Tim Schafer... 3.3 million dollars for Broken Age. 
So to say it went well over the goal would be a huge, huge understatement. So looking at that, you would think that, okay, Tim Schaefer now has $3.3 million for this game. So we should expect an amazing game. And maybe, just maybe, with that leftover money, Tim Schaefer can continue to make great games. So, of course, Broken Age comes out, and a lot of people actually enjoyed the game. Although people, once again, as I already said, kind of wondered that this, this didn't really look like a game that was made by that budget. So people wondered, you know, where did all that extra money go? And I mean, back then, I wondered that myself. So then Broken Age came out. By the way, it was Broken Age Part 1 that first came out. Yes, Tim Schafer broke up the Broken Age game into two parts. Part 1 came out in early 2014. And then people had to wait a year and a half for Broken Age Part 2. So, and then Broken Age Part 2 came out. People were wondering, you know, why did it take so long for this game to come out? And of course, people play Part 2. And then they come to realize that Part 2 is basically Part 1. It reuses every single area from Part 1. It added a couple of new areas, but for the most part, it was basically the same exact game as Part 1. It just advanced the story. So people looked at that and wondered, why the hell did this game need to be split up in two parts? I mean, imagine if Telltale did this with their games, that you had to wait a year and a half for episode one and two of a Telltale game. Imagine if you had to do that. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to think about that, isn't it? But Tim Schafer did it. And by the way, Tim Schafer charged for both parts, which, by the way, is fine. Because Telltale does the same thing with their episodic games. But, the Telltale games are like five bucks an episode. Tim Schafer wanted, I think it was 15 or to $20 for each part of Broken Age. So yeah, kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Now, once Part 2 came out, people were wondering, well, why did this need to be split up into two parts? It didn't really need it. And what the hell is Tim Schafer doing in that year and a half gap between Broken Age Part 1 and Part 2? Oh, I will tell you what Tim Schafer was doing. He was too busy shoving his head up Anita Sarkeesian's ass. You know, Anita Sarkeesian, the person who hates video games, hates video gamers. Tim Schafer's is pals with her. He has appeared in her videos. And by the way, Tim Schafer went to the Game Developers Conference in late 2014 and openly mocked gamers. You know, gamers. The people that gave him money to make his games. He mocked them. He trashed them. I mean, you know, if any of you remember that, it was with this little stupid sock puppet. It was really fucking stupid. But yeah, he was busy doing that, but couldn't release Broken Age Part 2 shortly after Part 1. People had to wait a year and a half for that. And I remember people, that's when people, some people really started criticizing Tim Schafer. Some prominent YouTubers did this. Like, I remember Alpha Omega Sin did a video. It was really great. And then I remember DSP, also known as Dark Side Phil. He made a video talking about Tim Schafer. These were two great rant videos on Tim Schafer. And by the way, I will link the videos in the description if you would like to check those videos out. And I highly recommend you do. They are great videos. And I also think uh, Boogie made a video too, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I think Boogie might have made a video too. But my point is, is that a lot of prominent YouTubers, bigger YouTubers than myself, made rant videos exposing Tim Schafer for what he is. And I remember after that happened, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe people will finally wake up. They will finally wake up as to who Tim Schafer is. Well then... The Game Awards of 2015 came, and Tim Schafer came out, 
and he announced Psychonauts 2. And a lot, got, a lot of people got excited because I never played the original Psychonauts, so I can't really say for sure how I feel about the game, but I do know that a lot of people enjoyed it. And they've been wanting the sequel to that game for a long while. So this made a lot of people happy. And I'll be honest, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, maybe Tim Schafer is finally taking this extra money, and he's actually going to make a game that people want. This is cool. Well, guess what? Psychonauts 2 also supposedly needed to be crowdfunded. And of course, Tim Schafer crowdfunded this game on this website called Fig. Yes, Fig is a different website from Kickstarter, which is what he used for Broken Age. Which, you know what? It's fine. There's a lot of different crowdfunding sites out there. But there's something different about this Fig crowdfunding site. And I remember when I first saw this, I was like, why did Tim Schafer pick Fig? Why did he pick, why didn't he use Kickstarter again? Obviously, a lot of people already supported him on Kickstarter. Why would he pick Fig? I will get into that in a second. But first of all, I just don't understand. I honestly don't understand why Psychonauts 2 also needs to be crowdfunded when Tim Schafer got a lot of leftover money from the Broken Age Kickstarter. Which, by the way, he even admits in an, order, in an interview we had with, what's the website? The Guardian. He said he received a lot of free money. Free money from that. His words. So, it begs the question, why the hell couldn't he just use that extra money to make Psychonauts 2? You know, begs the question. It begs the question. So now we will get into this little controversy here that Tim Schafer, by the way, doesn't admit this. People had to look this up. Tim Schafer picked this fig website because he is on the advisory board of this website. You want to know what that means? In case any of you don't know, the crowdfunding sites that host all these projects, they take a percentage after the project is after the project's funded. They take 10%. I believe it's 10%. It's either that or a little bit less, maybe 5, but I believe it's 10%. Which means Tim Schafer is pocketing 10% of the Psychonauts 2 money. He's pocketing it. That is why he chose this website. Have any of you, any of you who support Tim Schafer who are watching this video, have you woken up yet? I mean, I'm asking the question. Have you woken up yet? He's pocketing 10% of the money. That, that should set off alarms in your head. And by the way, the Psychonauts 2, ki or I, don't, I almost said Kickstarter, excuse me, the crowdfunding, it, he needed $3.3 million. Yes, he needs $3.3 million more dollars to make this game. And people gave him $3.4 million. You know, I, I, and I know I sound like a broken record here, but can, why do any of you not see why this is a problem here? I mean, when did it become that we gamers have to fund these people's games? Now, I don't mind some of these developers maybe needing some help with some projects. That's fine. I understand it. Especially developers who are truly in dire states. That they can't get their games published. That they really have no choice other than to turn to crowdfunding. But that's not Tim Schafer. He's been around the industry for decades. He's had his games published by major companies. He's not like a new indie developer who needs some help. But yet, 
people are continuously throwing money at this asshole. And I don't get it. Why do you people continue to support this guy when he's openly bashed gamers? You guys. He's criticized you guys for not believing Anita Sarkeesian's bullshit. And yet you will continue to throw money at this guy. And by the way, in his Guardian interview, he said he would do it again. As in crowdfunding. This was after the Broken Age Kickstarter. He said he would do it again. That, that should have set off alarms for people right there. Because most people, when they do these type of projects, their first thought, or at least a reasonable, nice person's first thought is, Oh, no. You know, that's fine. I appreciate the help. I appreciate the help. Thank you, thank you. Most people's first thoughts are, You know what? This actually worked. I'm going to do it again. And that's what Tim Schafer did here. He did it again. And guess what? Here's a spoiler alert. He's going to fucking do it again. How many of these freaking crowdfunding Tim Schafer projects does he have to make before any of you fucking wake up? It is not our job to fund these games. I mean... Look at it this way. Let me put it into you a different perspective so you can understand where I'm coming from. What if EA came out and said, you know what? We need your help to make this upcoming game. And we're going to start a Kickstarter. What if Activision did the same thing? What if Square Enix did the same thing? What would you people say then? You guys would probably bash the living hell out of those companies if they did that. Because, as you know, they have the resources to make these games. They don't really need to do this. Well, guess what? Why is it okay for Tim Schafer to do it? Answer me that. Why is it okay for him to do it? And you know what? I don't care how much you want Psychonauts to. There comes a time when you should stand up for your morals... You should have some morals and decency. I would never, honestly, and there's a lot of game franchises that I want to see return. But I would never, ever, give my own money to one of these major publishers to make one of these old gaming franchises that I want to see return. I would never do that. Why? Because I know they have the money to make the game. It's just up to them to do it. Tim Schafer doesn't need your money. He's got enough money to make these games. Yet he's going to continuously make these crowdfunding projects because he knows you people will fucking give him money. He's learned from his buddy, Anita Sarkeesian. You know what? I'm going to end it here because I'm getting a little upset. And there's really not much else I have to say here. But you know what? Any of you out there who... Love Tim Schafer, and you defend Tim Schafer on these issues. Please tell me why he needs to make these numerous crowdfunding projects. Why does every one of Tim Schafer's upcoming games need to be crowdfunded? Answer me that. You know, I don't think you can. Because there isn't a good excuse for this. Because this is really just Tim Schafer's way to pocket money. You know, we all come on here time after time again, and talk about all these companies constantly nickel and diming us, but it's okay if Tim Schafer does it? It's bullshit. Bullshit. And that's it for me. Please let me know your thoughts on this, and until next time, have a good one.